So thank you all for coming to experience tapping into love and thriving now. The message that I came to bring to you is one of hope and well-being and new possibilities for you. It is my intention that before you leave this room that you understand very deeply how to heal yourself that you've experienced some spontaneous healing within your own body in this next 45 minutes, and that you find a way to carry this back into the world, practice what I'm sharing with you, and to teach it to the people that you love the most. My name is Sonia Sophia. And I'm here to share a very loving, powerful healing technique with you called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. Is anyone familiar with this? Yes. That's great. Oh, yes. Awesome. And brand new to this information? Yes, the other half of the room. Good. So if you've already learned about EFT and you're already a tapper, then you know how powerful this is and maybe you're just looking for a refresher in how to do it or you're wondering about some new applications for it. And if you're brand new to it, then I'm going to give you an introduction to what it is that we're going to be doing. Um, and let me also rewind and tell you that I did not pay thousands and thousands of dollars to learn this. I learned this from a friend and then watched some DVDs off the internet that I ordered and began practicing immediately. And now I fly all over the world with my wings <laughs> and train people how to do it. So it is something that's really accessible and I'm not beholden to any school that I spent so long to train and now I have to go do the thing that I spend all the money on. So it's really just coming from having a great need to heal my own emotional body, my own psyche, and to clear the physical pain that I was carrying around my whole life. So 20 years ago, I got the deep, deep download inside that I was supposed to be a healer. And I was very resistant to that idea because I thought that meant I had to be a doctor because I'd never heard of healers before. And I was not going to medical school. And yet, my body constantly hurt and I was depressed probably five days out of seven, the kind that you don't want to get out of bed, you cancel appointments, you don't answer the phone, you don't return emails. Right? Anybody familiar with that kind of depression? <coughs> it waves in and out, but you, uh, especially strong at nighttime. Um, I didn't like my body, I thought I was old, fat, and ugly. I had one sad, hard relationship after another. I was a single mother and was barely making it as a healer in my little one-room studio apartment that had a bed in one corner and a massage table in the other. And I would sit in the kitchen and do kind of pastoral counseling, intuitive counseling with the few people who came to see me per week that kept me alive with their little gifts of cash into my life for giving them intuitive body work and counseling and love and presence. And after five or six years of doing that work, I was exhausted. I was doing everything I could to clear myself, flames of protection, archangels all over the room, violet pits to s pull the energy off and send it into the earth, grounding, connecting, spent hours and hours in meditation every day. I did yoga, I danced, I meditated, I prayed, and I kept a living altar, meaning that it was an actual place of inner work and prayer. And I was still exhausted and depressed and my back hurt. And I was still having a hard time keeping love from driving me crazy in my life. And I began to break down. Well, during that point, I could tell that I was getting burnt out. And I could tell that the people who were coming to me, although they were getting loving attention and they were getting really good body work from me, 
they were coming back the next week only a little bit better than the last week I had seen them. And if any of you have gone to get healings, you know what it's like to either be the practitioner or the practitioner, where you make slow, gradual improvement, maybe, especially if you'll take some of that advice about changing your lifestyle, but sometimes we can't, and then we feel guilty and ashamed, and then it kind of compounds, and, and we go and get healing, and then we stop, and then we go and we stop, and it's exhausting. It was exhausting for me as a practitioner because I wanted to see people be healed, and I was doing everything that I had learned to do. After 20 years of working on myself and applying what I knew from books and from workshops and you name it, I've done it. And it helped me understand why I was messed up. And I did get some relief, but it wasn't total. And I was exhausted inside. So during this point, I said a prayer. I said, please don't give me what I want anymore. Give me what I need. It's a really dangerous prayer. <laughs> so what I got was a really cool guy who wanted to sweep me off my feet. And within three weeks' time, I realized that I was dating a stalker oh, no. who had a split personality. And he was a fabulous healer by day and a psycho by night. Like phone calls 20 in a row at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to bring a storm down on your house. And you know we spent the night together and I'd wake up and I'd hear him whispering evil things in my ears while I was sleeping. I was like, whoa, this is scary. <coughs> so I had a nervous breakdown and got so shaky that when I heard what I thought was a car coming, it was probably him or something, I would shake and like hide in the closet like I was an abused woman. And there was no way I could do any healing work with anybody at that point. And I was losing income, meaning I was about to get kicked out of my house and couldn't feed myself or my kid. And so it was like, OK, how do you expect me to be a healer when I can barely get it together to see these sad people with all this pain who deserve love when I'm not healed myself? And there's nothing more I know how to do. I fasted, I prayed, I cleansed my colon, I took the supplements, I danced, I did color therapy, I worked with my chakras, I learned about the goddesses. I lit the incense and I burned the sage and I had plenty of crystals. I read the tarot deck, okay? I threw the runes, right? And I was still hurting. So. A friend of mine called me and said, we're really worried about you. You're not answering your phone. We haven't seen you in weeks. And I'm coming over. And I said, I'm OK. I'm a Healers don't like to get help, because they're the healer. <laughs> but I was so broken down inside that I finally said, OK, come over. Whatever you can do, fine. Come love me. So she came over and said, well, I just took this workshop, and I learned this thing called EFT. And you know, I just did a weekend workshop, so I'm not very good at it. I just barely learned it, but could we try it on you? And I was too broken to say no. So she sat down with a pen and paper and a big box of Kleenex and gave me a four-hour EFT session. In four hours, I was over the trauma of dating the guy that I didn't think I would open my heart again for at least a year. I cried and cried and cried. I refused to even do the technique on myself because I was just too overwhelmed and floppy. So she just sat and tapped on my meridians and worked with me while I bawled and said things. And she wrote things down and said them back to me. When she left, I was filled with joy. My body had no more pain in it. And I felt like I'd just taken LSD. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what just happened to me? I feel connected to myself. My body stopped hurting. I don't even care about psycho guy. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm not afraid of him. My heart feels mine again. And what is this? So I called her and said, could we do that again? <laughs> and not only that, but the things that were behind those issues, why I would attract that kind of relationship, and why I had that much tension in my body was dissolving really fast. <laughs> 